Hi there, I'm Michael Posnick with Century 21 Northumberland Real Estate in Prince Edward Island, Canada. I primarily specialize in dealing with purchasers off-island looking for primarily waterfront properties, investment, luxury, recreational, and income and rental properties here on the island. Today I wanted to try something new. As a real estate agent, Dealing with mainly off-island buyers, I get numerous emails from all over the world, mainly from the U.S., Europe, and Canada. And many times those emails have uh, common questions. So what I wanted to try to do today is record a YouTube video with a specific question, and I'll give you some specific answers. So the question comes in from Rex. And what he says is he says the bottom line is he's looking for long-term rental properties for investment purposes with 25% down. says his credit is sound and his rent should cover all expenses including the mortgage and have a profit component built in. So, so basically what Rex is looking for is he's looking for properties in Prince Edward Island that are rental properties that will produce an income if he puts 25% down which is the typical minimum down payment in Canada without going through any sort of insurance. Uh, we call here CMHC or Canadian Home Mortgage Corporation insurance. Uh, sometimes you can get away with 20 percent uh, with you know vendor take backs and stuff you can get even below that but for the for the for argument's sake for the purposes of this video we're gonna go with 25 percent down and at the end of the day he wants to see a profit all after all of his expenses so what we're going to do first, I think, is, is define what a rental property is because a rental property can consist of many different things. I think when people think of rental properties initially, they think of uh, either a, an apartment building or a duplex or, or a fourplex. Um, to make this fairly quick and to the point, you know, basically your different configurations of rental properties in PEI would be apartment buildings, which might be 5, 10, 15, 20 units, 50 units, 60 units in a complex. We don't have any uh, skyscrapers or, or large apartment buildings here. Uh, other than that, you're going to see the, sm you know, the smaller apartment buildings that are 6 to 8 to 9 to 12 units. Down from there, typically, you're going to see fourplexes, uh, threeplexes, duplexes, and, and from you know, below that, obviously, your single-family homes and dwellings. Now, in addition to this, and what I feel is a lot more exciting than that type of rental property, if you're looking at more of the entry level, the one or two or three or four units, is looking at uh, what I refer to as recreational rental properties. And Prince Edward Island is definitely the place to be for uh, recreational rental properties. And what that would be defined as, that would be a waterfront home or a cottage um, or maybe even a year-round house that's on the water that's typically being rented out on a weekly basis. Now, you don't have to have all these parameters. It doesn't necessarily have to be on the water, but waterfront definitely is going to bring in a bigger rent. Now, why this is really, really attractive here in Prince Edward Island is because the amount of rent you're going to bring in on a weekly basis is going to be huge it's going to be much higher than you're going to see in most other places. Uh, for instance, in Madeira Beach, Florida, last year I was looking for a rental and I found one right on the beach, white sandy beach. It was a penthouse. Uh, it was worth about two million dollars and I was able to rent that for eight hundred dollars a week. If you take your look at your return, what it cost you for that penthouse, what it cost to run condo fees, the list goes on and on and on, your return is very, very poor. Additionally, I found about 45 pages of rentals when I went to VRBO.com to look for a rental. Now, if you look at Prince Edward Island, the amount of rentals available in the recreational market is very small. There might be a page or two on VRBO.com. You can check out CottageLink.com. There's a number of other sites you can look at. But what you're going to find is this, and here's my point. You're going to spend less money on that waterfront home, and you're going to get a much greater return, and you're going to be able to use the property, and 
potentially, if it's in a, a good location with a decent road, you'll be able to rent it out 365 days a year. So not only are you getting the 10 or 12 weeks in the summer, but you're also getting year-round rental. Typically, you transition from a weekly rental to a monthly rental off-season. Uh, on a, on a $500,000 waterfront home, it wouldn't be uncommon to bring in uh, over $60,000 a year. We have, you know, just to give you some other numbers, we do have waterfront homes, the 250, the 350, the 400 range, bringing in two, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 a week. Uh, there's some of them that are able to get $4,000, $5,000, $8,000 a week. Um, but typically I like to stick to the 20, you know, under 3,000, maybe a little bit above 3,000. I have one client that bought a house for under $300,000. It's getting $4,500 a week successfully. So that's the recreational market. And that's the market I, I really like and I think is, is phenomenal. But a lot of people are going to be looking for, uh, you know, for more than one unit at a time. And, and paying three or four or $500 a door for rental property may not be in their plan. So next we'll discuss uh, more of the traditional uh, apartment buildings and houses. So now basically I just wanted to touch on your traditional income units. Traditional income units, you know, start at a single house, um, which some people absolutely love. We have houses here, right, starting at $40,000. Uh, you know, you can buy with, you know, next to nothing down. They'll give you a decent income. Uh, but, you know, they're probably not going to be worth much more than forty or fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 in the next five or so years. Uh, the next step would be your duplex. Uh, we do have duplexes here that... Uh, you know, I don't want to get too much into the technical numbers, but you know, 150, 189,000 that you know might rent out for 1,500 dollars a month for both sides, uh, and they would pay their own expenses. From there, you get into the fourplexes, the sixes, and the eights. We've got some really, really good buys in those apartments, and we do actually have uh, 12 and 24 unit apartments that are available, but um, not listed. A lot of this stuff is not going to be listed. The properties that I have are, are prime properties. I can tell you which ones are the good ones and the bad ones. I can do the financials myself. I do have a background in business and finance, so I'm able to, to do a lot more than a lot of agents could do. And I think that's really important when you're looking for uh, income units. I think it's really, really important to be dealing with an agent that does have a business and finance background, that is investing in real estate, him or herself, that's able to take the financials and dissect them. Unfortunately, 95% of the apartments or more that you're going to see here in Prince Edward Island or anywhere else, the agent hasn't put together proper financial information. So I can take a look at it and within a couple minutes know if this is a property we should be looking at. When looking at rental properties, the numbers matter more than anything else and you really have to have some experience in doing that if you don't deal with an agent that does. Uh, all kinds of things can be read into those financials. For instance, sometimes, just to give you an example, agents will email me or call me and say, oh, I've got this great apartment and it has a 15% return. The first thing I think about is this. Most of the time, when there's a really high return, the building requires a lot more work than a newer building that has more of an industry standard return, um, which may be in PEI, there are buildings out there that will get you nine and a half, nine three quarter cap rate. Uh, but, uh, you know, if something does have a 15% cap, chances are it needs a bit of work. They do come up, don't get me wrong, but usually there, there are problems. I can look for that. Uh, capitalization rates, anywhere from six to seven to eight to nine to ten percent uh, as far as what it's going to cost you just like I said to Rex uh, could be anywhere from a forty thousand dollar house to a multi-million dollar apartment it basically comes down to your financial capability and uh, the returns that you want so anyway that's about it on income units uh, again, my name is Michael Posnick with Century 21 Northumberland here in Summerside, PEI. And my standard website is uh, michaelshomes.com. And my commercial website is michaelsre.com. Thank you and, and have a great day and any comments would be appreciated. Bye for now.